Hi guys, I uh, just want to talk about Spain today. Is it worth moving with the Brexit? Um, in all honesty, you've got to look at it from a bigger picture, especially if you can work remote work or you're a mobile a lot. Um, for example, in the UK, I, I've been mobile for, well, probably since 97, I suppose. Um, I work all over the country, so having a home in the UK really doesn't make much sense. You're still not paying council tax and stuff unless you're going to rent the bloody thing out. Um, in Spain, you can have a fairly cheap rental or you can buy a place pretty cheap. Um, one of the things that I like here with the rentals is that things like community charges and stuff aren't your problem. So although you may be paying three or four thousand pesos a month for an apartment down by the beach, in reality the owners are paying one thousand or whatever for all the maintenance charges and the taxes related to it. So from that side of it, it's sometimes worth just renting. The internet, although hit and miss, one of the things I will say, this box I got from um, Movistar is running at 10 meg here in La Mata because we I just picked it up from the old house and brought it here and it's running faster here now I assume that the transponder because these work on the um, mobile phone c connections um, isn't as busy here compared to where I was because it, at certain times of the day it just went where obviously the network's very busy I'm not getting that in La Mata but also it's getting to the end of the holiday season that may be another reason um, but the point being is, you've got flights easy from Alicante, you've got flights easy from uh, Xavier Airport, with Mercia Airport, um, and other areas where you can get in and out of the UK very easily. But also, I mean, I'm looking at a contract at the moment for Bristol. Well, Bristol's got its own airport, so logistic wise, if you can get the right setup, you may not even need a car, and it doesn't mean that. Uh, you have to change too much. Um, it's, the hard bit is actually getting the company to recognise it. Um, I know with a contract I was looking at in Canary Wharf, they couldn't seem to grasp the fact that coming in from Worcester uh, cost up to £140 a day on the train, was a nightmare commuting by the um, traditional motorway, and at the same time, they're saying, but we like to see people in the office. And you're like, you may like it, but it doesn't make any sense. The work isn't even in the office. The work is actually from clients all over the United Kingdom. So what is the obsession with being in Canary Wharf? Because I know with Carillion, for example, although it was partly down to the fact that the company was failing, but it reduced its number of landmark buildings over time and put more people to home working. Because A, they weren't paying the electric, B, they weren't paying for the internet, but C, they weren't paying for the square meterage, which is rather expensive in buildings around London. Instead, you got people that could often work to their own needs and the business needs. For example, some people may have kids to pick up from school and they may not have been able to take the job in the UK uh, at an office, but they'll go out for like say an hour and then they'll sit and work there at nine o'clock at night for an hour. The flexibility allowed the business to function and often to the benefit of the business. I often find uh, companies that like you working 9 to 5 are because they just see that as working being 9 to 5, not the productivity or the stuff that you actually do during that time period. Uh, cause a lot of time it's wasted. The two hour commute there and back, the, um, the hanging around and updating what's happened over the weekend that happens during the working day for a lot of people. The, um, the morning coffee, with the first 30 minutes, people are going, oh, I've got to switch the computer on, I'm just going to sit here for 20 minutes, I'll see what happens when John comes in, have a chat with John, and then nothing gets done for that 30 minutes. And at the end of the day, a lot of people will sit and watch the clock, and go in, another 20 minutes, another 20 minutes. And they've already shut down and just sitting there doing nothing. I find working at home, you go, right, I've got this to complete, I'll get that done, it's got to be done by Friday afternoon, and you'll fit it in. I mean, what I try and do, for example, on a Monday and Tuesday, I'll work longer days, because what I find is on a Friday, I would like to get it in at Friday 8am, 
because then somebody's got a chance to review it on a Friday and they've got any questions they can ask me before the weekend. It doesn't mean I've slide off on Friday. In fact, the work was already done on the Monday and Tuesday and often by Wednesday the whole thing's finished. But the difference is those hours are completely productive. I haven't worked any less. In fact, I've often worked more because you're not getting into the office after that um, long journey on the train or whatever trying to find a seat and not in the best of moods by the time you get there plus the hassles of getting up early to get to the train station you get up out of bed you switch the computer on got all your emails and that set up and sometimes you get up at six o'clock in the morning and sit and do the first couple of hours and think i'll go back to bed for an hour you come back when people are in the office and they've already started replying to the stuff you've done and then you continue on in an office environment though you often get into the office well this is what I used to do, I used to get in early, I used to get in about 7 o'clock in the morning send all my emails off most of them I wouldn't get replied to before 11 o'clock um, now bearing in mind in some of these it's relating to access, it's relating to things I need people to come back to me on I'm stuck until they do their emails because I've already completed everything I have to do because I come in early and get it done but at the same time, even if I come in a bit later, they would then do it after lunch. Because up until lunch, at 11 o'clock, they go for their tea break at 10, come back to office uh, you know, for the, the last bit before lunch, they'll browse through the emails, respond to you, then they'll go off for lunch. Um, the point being is it gets dragged out. I find if you work remotely, you're contactable a lot more. It's to the company's benefit. So I do think, even with the Brexit, I do think it's to many companies benefit to actually utilize a lot of people being able to homework and at the same time a lot of the skilled people that took early retirement and whatever are quite happy to turn around and do a few hours a day. I'll be honest I will quite happily take a three day week doing contracting from home. I don't need a full working week, I'll, I'll quite happily do two or three hours a day because at the end of the day, I don't need the money. I just need the regularity of something going on and that continuity that keeps my hand in it. And a lot of people are exactly the same. I know with when Carillion went bump, a lot of people had redundancy payments that took them up to retirement. But one of the problems you get after about six months is you've got nothing to do unless you actually create something. But they would be happy to do a few hours a week on less money, etc because it keeps their hand in, it keeps them occupied and at the same time it's stuff they often like doing but some of it is trying to change the way businesses think and that's the odd bit, that is the odd bit but anyway, I do think it's worth a look I do think if you move to Spain from the UK if you can get a company to acknowledge that firstly your cost of living is reduced secondly, um, the environment is better you've got the sunshine most of the time You've also got the fact that um, you're more accessible for the business because you're a bit more flexible. Um, remote working has a huge amount of benefits and I often find those people that are against it are often the ones that abuse it most in the sense that if they were working at home, they wouldn't work at home. So they assume everybody's like that. But if you're a business professional, there's no benefit in doing it. If you want to be here, why would you actually want to damage the ability to do that? It doesn't make any sense. Thanks for watching.